Hi, I'm Kushuful Yun. This teacher guide is about the Mindset Learn series of lessons called Getting Into Poetry. These lessons are suitable for learners in the FET band. You may choose to use these lessons with grade 10, 11 or 12 learners depending on the competence of your learners and the purpose for which you are choosing the lessons. In this guide, we tell you what the series of lessons is about and how it links to the curriculum. We also discuss ideas for using the lessons with your learners. You may want to make notes, so have a paper and pencil ready. This series aims to take away some of the fears that learners have about studying poetry. We show them that they can comment on poems written by others and that they can write poetry themselves. We also help them to master some of the vocabulary that they will need to know in order to analyze and discuss poems. There are eight lessons. One, origins of poetry. Two, writing your own poetry. Three, structure of poems. Four, rhyme schemes. Five, types of poems. Six, Elizabethan and Italian sonnets. 7. Subject, Tone and Intention 8. How to have a Poetry Slam These lessons will help your learners to approach poetry with confidence and will equip them with skills and knowledge that they can apply to the poems you are studying in class. The lesson in this series address learning outcome 2 reading and viewing. These lessons will assist learners in achieving a range of assessment standards within this outcome, including being able to explore and explain key features of texts and how they can contribute to meaning. And in terms of poetry, being able to recognize how word choices, imagery and sound devices affect mood, meaning and theme and recognize that verse and stanza forms, rhyme, rhythm and punctuation affect meaning. The learning outcome and assessment standards for each lesson are stated at the beginning of each video lesson in the series. In addition, lesson outcomes linked to these are also given in each lesson. Our approach to teaching poetry is to go back to basics, to show learners different genres of poetry, to expose them to different types of poems, and to teach them the basic skills and vocabulary that they will need to analyze poems. After they have watched these lessons, learners will have a general understanding of poetry that they can apply to a range of poems and they may even be encouraged to write their own poems. If possible, you'd find it useful to watch the videos by yourself before you show them to your learners. This will enable you to make notes of the places to stop the video and ask questions or have a discussion. It will also allow you to see when and how you could best incorporate the video lessons into your learning program. You could also think of activities you could do with your learners before or after watching the videos. To get learners interested in these lessons and to keep them involved, you will find it useful to get them to do the tasks and activities presented in the lesson. These tasks are linked to the learning outcomes given in the lessons and to at least one assessment standard in the curriculum policy. Completing the tasks will give both you and your learners evidence of how well they've achieved the lesson outcomes. The tasks can also be used as part of a learner's record of progress towards the assessment standards for each grade. In the case of this series of lessons, you can also apply the techniques and terminology for studying poems that are taught in the video to the poems you are studying in class. Now let's have a more detailed look at the lessons in the series and how you can use them in your classroom. In the first lesson, we learn about the origins of poetry. We realize that poetry has been around for a long time and that the poetry produced at different times have had different conventions. 
to relate these lessons to the poetry you're studying in class, you may want to encourage learners to work out at which point on the poetry timeline the poems you are studying were written. You could also compare poems written at different points of history and see how they differ in terms of structure and subject matter. In the second lesson, we give tips and techniques for writing your own poetry. We realize that the steps of writing good poetry are the same today as they were during Shakespeare's times. The task for this lesson requires learners to write poems of their own. This activity can be quite fun if you don't make it part of a formal assessment. To further encourage learners to write poems of their own, you may want to hold a poetry slam like we discuss in lesson eight. In the lessons on the structure of poems and rhyme schemes, we teach learners about different types of poems. The terminology that is taught in these lessons can be applied to any poem and learners will also see how different poems have different rhyme schemes from traditional poems to free verse poems. To reinforce the terminology that is covered in these lessons, you may want to get learners to look for examples of the different rhyme schemes and structures in the poems you are studying in class. This will also help you to become more comfortable using the terminology to talk about poems. In the lessons on types of poems and Elizabethan and Italian sonnets, we consider examples of different types of poems. We learn about ballads and lyrics and where they come from, the structure of haiku poems and the features of odes. Then we go into more detail about the form and structure of sonnets so that learners will be able to differentiate between a Shakespearean sonnet and an Elizabethan sonnet. These lessons serve as a good introduction to different types of poems. However, only a few examples are given. You may want to build on these lessons by considering other examples of these types of poems. This will reinforce the terminology and will encourage learners to look for the features of the types of poems that they've learned about. In lesson seven, we learn how to determine a poem's subject, tone and intention through playing detective and carefully considering clues that are given in a poem. Just like the other lessons in the series, the concepts that are taught in this lesson should be practiced on other examples. You may want to get learners to divide into groups to consider the tone and intention of a range of poems. They could then report their findings back to the class. This would expose learners to the wide range of poems and doing this activity in groups would make examining unfamiliar poems less intimidating. In our final lesson, we learn how to have a poetry slam. A poetry slam is a fun way of sharing poetry with friends and creating new poems. Not only will it show learners that poetry can be enjoyable, it is also a non-threatening way of encouraging your learners to be creative. We hope that you will enjoy using these lessons to introduce your learners to some techniques and terminology for getting into poetry. If you would like more information about using these lessons or lesson notes for each lesson, please refer to our website www.mindset.com. .co.za. From me, Kushu, goodbye.